Okay, so as you can see, we have the main skull part here, the jaw, and the skull cap. You don't really have to do anything to this, so I'm just going to put this off to the side. I'm just going to go to the jaw for a second. So the teeth don't come on, or really they don't come assembled. They tell you to glue them. Um, and there's, there's a little schematic that usually comes with these that it tells you which ones go where. Just as I know, what I did with these was I used hot glue rather than crazy glue to mount them because I felt that it would give, and you can see the shininess there. Once this gets painted to whatever it needs to be painted, it gives you sort of a look of having gums rather than having open spaces in between the teeth where it's not fitting properly. So I felt that was a good way of filling it in by using, and I did it the same inside. You can see better there. It gives you more dexterity, and it makes it look like it has gums. Now, the most important part for this, the jaw, is this little guy here. This is what attaches it to the arm of the servo. This piece actually in this kit is a metal. So I had to tap this. Well, first drill it and then tap it so this screwed on properly. I drilled it all the way to the other side and tapped it all the way. You may not need to, but I figured this can always be filled in with something and just sand it a little bit. I just felt the tap came out better that way. The tap for this is going to be, I believe is 230 seconds, but give me one second and I'll be right back with that. Okay, so the actual tap size is 256. I believe you should be able to read that right there. It's actually a pretty tiny tap. Um, you can probably use a Dremel at low speed to tap this from this side. Just don't tap it too high up. You want a thick area because you don't want this to break. So before you actually cut the rod to the servo, you get this on, you get the rod onto the skull assembly, meaning get it on here, you pass it through your skull hole that you have to cut out, and I'll explain this in a second. You measure, and then you cut your rod. Now, you're better off cutting the rod a little longer, and then have to adjust the threading and then cut it later if you need to. If you cut it too short, you're basically going to have to find a new rod. Obviously this is the tap holder. This is the tap. If you don't have these, I saw online somebody say that they do sell these that come across and have a nut. And then you could just drill the hole and just tie in the nut and then just put something over it. Since I happen to have the 256 bit and tap, I went that way. These here are little knobs that attach it to the skull. And they basically go in these holes here. They're, it's pretty tight, so you sort of have to put it on this one side and then come around and just kind of pull it open and put it on the other. So as you can see, it's fairly loose, but when it first comes, it's actually fairly tight and you actually have to hold it to move it. It doesn't go down like that. So what I did was I sanded these just slightly a little bit, put it on, see the movement, sand it a little more, put it on, see the movement, just to make sure it had some nice movement. You really don't want it tight, so you get nice movement from your jaw. On the skull, again, I also did it with a hot glue gun to put on the teeth. So it looks like it has gums. So that's it for the jaw. So I'm just going to go over now to the skull. When you first get these skulls, at least this one, this hole is not this big. It's actually a hole about this big, which you're not going to get in much done through there. You actually have to cut this hole out big. This one actually needs to be cut a little more. As you can see from the marks here, I just haven't had a chance to do it. It has to be cut out pretty big. I used the Dremel. And the reason for this size is when you look at this assembly, you see these here? 
this will come out a little bit and you need room for them to move so if you have a hole like this it's just gonna get stuck and you're not gonna get movement so that's why you want a nice big hole so I actually use a Dremel to cut this slowly this side here is pretty thick so I need something a little stronger than that to cut it or use the Dremel and just do it slowly but again I just haven't had the opportunity to do that so I'll be doing that in a bit now this hole does not come here you obviously have to cut this hole it's hard to tell from the positioning where you sort of have to cut the hole so that's why it's so big if you knew the exact spot you could actually probably do it half the size of what it is but it's not so big that it really shows a problem and again you could always put maybe like a piece of clear tape over it here and then just kind of paint it however you're going to paint this and it probably won't be noticeable because really you need the hole to be down here like this that's what I found for this kit it was what was really needed so if you sort of look at the position in here where you have to cut it you see the end of this part right here you measure about half an inch this way so this sort of becomes your center right here where this meets becomes your center you measure across about half inch half inch this way and half inch this way and you sort of make like this oval cut hole and that's sort of what you need for this again you can start smaller start in the center put your rod put the jaw see how it moves and you start widening it as you need to as you find you may need to do it now you will also need to drill these holes you can see on the other side and the reason that you see these black marks here is because basically I sort of had to shave this down to make it flat on all of them because of the way that these L brackets sort of protrude That's you can see how they protrude from the plastic here so you need some room for that you can drill these holes a little bigger maybe to push it in you just have to be careful because you have to understand this is sort of like a plexiglass plastic so this can crack and if this cracks you got a problem so I actually widen these holes a little bit to give more movement and to be able to push it in a little bit but then I felt that it was best to grind these down so this is going down the grind about three quarters of an inch the whole positioning I would say this is about half an inch to 9 16 down so actually let me get a ruler and give you a better measurement on that so we're gonna assume we're gonna assume that you want this flush with the top of the skull so the hole is looks like about half an inch I would say it could be 7 16 so really you could do half an inch to 7 16 down from the side here to the center of the hole so you just do that around the way that you would sort of mark it is since this is the front of your skull and this is the front you sort of place this on use the little marks like I did right here where they are at for all of them so that tells you the positioning go about half inch down from the center and drill your hole then on the inside you make these marks this is obviously about three quarters of an inch down that I cut it you can see right there 
about three quarters of an inch. So then you sort of kind of cut this open a little bit with your Dremel or something to make it flat. I use a Dremel and a, and a knife to sort of flatten it. If you have a little chisel, you can actually make that easier. Just cut down a little bit to make it flat. Try it out, make sure it goes in smoothly, you know, until you get it positioned properly. So the holes for the eyes are already there. At least these do not move. So you can use those holes. These eyes came with a kit. They're RGBs. So they sort of just, this is a piece of black tape to keep it from coming out. So I sort of put it backwards with the sticky side so that we just slide it in and they sort of stay there. You may want to glue them from the inside depending what you want to do. This was just more for testing of it. They're actually controlled by this little board. I don't know if they sell th this board anymore. This is the RGB servo cheapy creepy board for the RGBs. Basically you could s select which color you want, blue, green, or red. These other two are for ground and voltage. And your RGBs go connected here so you sort of splice them together and put them on the colors based on this board. So that's it for the skull itself, this main assembly and everything else. I'm going to go over now to the controller board. Actually, before I go on to the electronics, I figure I showed you how to assemble this together. Before I show you that, there's one thing that I missed. If you notice here, this is slightly bent. These actually come straight, but I found on the one for the jaw, if I gave it a little bend, maybe this around 20 to 30 degree bend, it pushed this in and it lined up better with the hole. Otherwise, you get some rubbing here. So that's something you can do. I just grabbed it with a little plier like this, a nose plier, and just kind of bent it while I was holding it. Just be very careful when you're doing that so you don't snap it if you decide to do this. Otherwise, you have to buy a new one. So let me show you how to assemble this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the eyes. That's just for ease of running the wire. Now this is where you would hot glue them if you wanted them to stay in place. Um, if you want to make this hole bigger so you could adjust the positioning, you can and then hot glue them. They'll tend to keep coming out because I haven't glued them on. But again, this is just for demo. Okay, so I have my eyes in place. You can see right there it popped out and that's fine for now next I'm gonna put on this so just make sure this is facing the front and this arm here just make sure you line it up with the hole when you push it in so nothing breaks or it doesn't get stuck inside and you have to pull everything apart so just you grab your wires kind of push them in you run this through. Now make sure right there you have your arm for the jaw there. And as you put in this in, keep an eye on the wires to make sure none of them are pinched against the skull. Line up your brackets with your holes. And then it should go in. If you did what I did with cutting little notches on it. So once you have that in pretty roughly, just line up one of your holes. And you can always leave this a little loose here on this side in order to help line it up. Put in one. Don't tighten it all the way because it'll make it easier to keep adjusting. So 
Then I'll do the next one. Again, this is pretty tight because of the way that I did it. Just line up your hole. Get your next screw. Split a piece of plastic in there. So let me just clear that out. You don't want it to get stuck in there. Move on to the next one. These holes for these screws, make them bigger than the screw, but not too big that the head goes through. So it makes it easier to line things up. So now I'm just gonna tie in these all the way that I have all four on. And if you loosen any of these at the top, don't forget to tie in those again. I only did the one here. So I'm just gonna tie that up. This board does not really have to be flush since this is gonna be moving around. Just, you don't want it hugely out. You can see right there it's slightly off by less than a sixteenth right here so that's not really a big problem you should have all your wires out and you may want to reroute these around like let's say if I reroute this one through here to push it to the back that way it's not getting pinched by anything Next is gonna go the jaw. Now before I put in the jaw, you see right here on the arm, you should see that this plastic piece has a little hole in it. You can see right here, that's what's gonna go against this little bump here and lock it into place. You can see the eye popped out there because I didn't <laughs> glue it on. So I'm gonna go, put one side of the jaw in, pull, to the other side, you should hear a snap. Make sure that this is facing towards the bump. Bring it up, and you can see, snaps in. Now you have your joint plate. It's pretty much assembled. What we really need to do is put in the skull cap which the skull cap has these little bumps or knobs or whatever you call them. Line them up and put it on. I don't know if you wanna glue this at all or just hold it down with tape or something. I doubt this is gonna be roughing around too much, so it should be fine. Then you just plug everything in as you need to plug it in to your boards and that should be it once you have everything assembled. Now on to the electronic portion.